but within their ranks, a drama plays out. Two hyena cubs, born in rival territories, struggle to survive as their clans wage war. volatile world will two new lives endure the lure plain flat dry merciless temperatures soar and water is scarce when the rains come a wildebeest migration will flood into Lua Plain, but for now, only a few hardy adults stir the dust. Yet in this barren landscape, one of Africa's most underestimated predators has risen to greatness. The spotted hyena. Spotted hyenas are extraordinary survivors. Their powerful jaws crush through bone, and their cast iron stomachs digest even rotting meat. Yet in many regions, these bone crushers hunt far more often than they scavenge. Female spotted hyenas are remarkable amongst mammals. They are larger, stronger, and fiercer than male hyenas. And they have the most male-like sexual organs of any female mammal. This bizarrely elongated organ was once thought to be a product of high testosterone levels in the womb, but today it continues to mystify scientists. The female hyenas govern the clans, led by all-powerful matriarchs. Neighboring clans are sworn enemies, and territorial trespassers are often viciously attacked. This story begins in Zambia, in the Lua Plain National Park, where spotted hyenas reign as the top predators. In the heart of the park, is a thriving hyena clan. The clan's leader, the matriarch, lures her youngest cub from a burrow. It's a tiny female named Nasanta, and today the little cub meets her clan for the first time. For two weeks, the newborn lay hidden in a burrow away from this main den, but now she is old enough to join the clan. Nasanta raises her leg in the typical hyena greeting, allowing her clanmates to identify her distinctive scent. The clan will recognize her by this smell, and she in turn must learn to recognize theirs. It's an important learning curve since each hyena has its own rank and the Santa needs to know who's who as she finds her place in the clan. Fortunately, when it comes to rank, the Santa has a head start. She and her twin sister get more than just milk from their mother. As cubs, they also inherit her superior status. As the matriarch, their mother ranks highest in the clan and enjoys the support and protection of all of the clan's dominant females. Nobody dares to confront her or her cubs. But not all hyenas live such charmed lives. Four kilometers to the southwest is another clan Nasanta's clan's greatest rival. This clan abounds with cubs. Most are the offspring of the high-ranking females, but one among them is different. His name is Twambo, and he is the son of a low-ranking female. Like Nasanta, Twambo inherits his mother's rank, but this time, it's not a blessing. Low-ranking hyenas are often bullied by the clan, and with his mother's rank, Twambo will be a target. His mother will care for him, 
but she won't dare to defend him from the more dominant females or their cubs. Behind her lies Twambo's father. He's the alpha male, the top-ranking male in the clan. But all spotted hyena males are subordinate to the females. He ranks even lower than Twambo's mother. Twambo will get little support from his low-ranking parents. He'll have to face his clanmates alone. But for now, it's all good fun. At only a few weeks old, the cubs are more concerned with play than rank. For Twambo, the worst is yet to come. Twambo and the Santa's home on the Lua Plain has a catastrophic history. For more than a hundred years, the Lozi people have lived in the Lua Plain National Park amongst the wildlife, conserving and protecting it by order of the Lozi King. But a decade ago, around the turn of the 21st century, everything changed. A scourge of poachers invaded Lua Plain. Weapons streamed in from war-torn Angola and a massacre was unleashed. Lions were targeted for their valuable skins, the herds for their meat. Death swept across the plains. Thousands were slaughtered. Lua's wildlife populations were devastated. By 2003, the hyena's gravest enemies, lions, were all but obliterated. Only one known lioness survived, probably the last of her species in the region. But the poachers spared the spotted hyena. With its blotchy coat, it made a poor trophy, and its meat was worthless as food. With the threat of lions eliminated, the spotted hyena came to dominate the Lua Plain. But life in Lua today still has its challenges. The last weeks of the dry season are excruciatingly hot. The landscape distorts behind a haze of heat. But today, Twambo's mother senses a change. A wind has picked up, carrying with it the promise of relief. A storm approaches. The wildebeest bulls revel in the anticipation of rain. storm harbors a deadly threat. Fire. Flames tear through the dry grassland at terrifying speed, heading straight for Twambo and the Santa's dens. The cubs are too small to outrun the blaze. If the fire reaches the den, they could suffocate in the heat and smoke. A new dawn brings the dying flames of the inferno. The blaze scorched the land around the Santa's den before the wind turned it away. The cubs are safe, but they look out on a desolate landscape.
As the last embers burn to dust, the promised rain arrives at last. The cool downpour provides long-awaited relief from the heat and brings about a spectacular phenomenon on the plain. A few days after the fire, a carpet of pink lilies sprouts across the plains. Triggered by chemicals in the smoke from the fire, the beautiful bloom lasts only a few weeks. In the meantime, Nasanta's mother, the matriarch, needs to find food. The matriarch heads north, where the first herds of the migration begin to gather, leaving young Nasanta untended at the den. Spotted hyena milk is so rich that Nasanta can survive without suckling for days at a time, so the matriarch can afford to venture far from the den in search of food. At last, she spots a telltale sign of a potential meal. Vultures. Her suspicions are soon confirmed. A wildebeest bull lies injured in the grass. The matriarch is the first hyena on the scene but she is not the only predator. This bull is the victim of the last lioness in Lua Plain. The matriarch tries to move in on the bull, but she's unnerved by the lioness. A conflict with a big cat could be fatal. The hyena keeps her distance as the bull quietly dies, not willing to provoke a conflict while the lioness remains nearby. The circling silhouettes of the vultures can be seen from far and wide, guiding the matriarch's clanmates to the kill. In the darkness, the hyenas feast at last. At daybreak, Nasanta's mother and her clanmates return to their den. The matriarch rouses the cubs. Nasanta is larger now, and lighter fur marks her face and neck. The adults have returned with meat, a rare luxury for hyena cubs. It's the highest ranking cubs that commandeer the scrap. Nasanta is last to the feast, but she fights for her share. The other top-ranking cubs are stiff competition, and they won't let lower-ranking cubs anywhere near this scrap. As an adult, Nasanta will have to contend with highly competitive clanmates at kills. She must learn to eat fast or lose out, since a clan can reduce a carcass to scraps in less than 20 minutes. She will still suckle her mother's rich milk for about a year, but this new taste for meat is the beginning of Nasanta's transformation into a deadly and efficient predator. The Lua Plain is undergoing an extraordinary metamorphosis. In the coming days, the rains fall in an almost continuous deluge. The beginning of an annual flood that will cover much of the plains in water. Dusty depressions become waterlogged marshes. And life floods into the plains. A 
At last, the migration arrives. Just in time for the bountiful wet season, over 35,000 wildebeest descend on the plains. The culmination of the second largest wildebeest migration on Earth. Most of the cows are pregnant, and in the next few weeks, all of them will give birth. The calves make easy prey, but the sheer number of them ensures that many will survive to adulthood. For the hyenas, the time of plenty has begun. Meanwhile, at the den to the north, Nasanta is finding her place in the clan. She marks the grass around the den with a distinctive scented paste from glands beneath her tail. The adults use this pasting to mark their territory. For Nasanta, it's part of the process of establishing her rank. She is quickly learning to exert the status she inherited from her mother. This male flattens his ears behind his head as she approaches him, showing his submission to her. Nasanta lifts her leg in the typical hyena greeting, allowing him to recognize her distinctive scent. Most of the adult males here are immigrants from other clans who joined Nasanta's clan to find a mate. They forfeited the rank they inherited from their mothers when they left their own clans, falling instantly to the bottom of the hyena hierarchy. Despite Nasanta's age and tiny size, this male and all the other adult immigrant males in her clan are subordinate to her. The tiny cub holds such sway because her mother backs her up. <laughs> the matriarch often comes to Nasanta's defense, attacking low-ranking hyenas to reinforce her tiny cub status. The male is now in a precarious position. He must show absolute submission if he is to avoid an attack. Nasanta follows her mother's example, sniffing the male's genitalia. He bows and bobs his head to show his subservience. But the clan females are not convinced. They join the interrogation. Fearlessly, the Santa stays in the thick of the fray. The other cubs are jumpy, but Nasanta seems fearless. With the protection of the matriarch and the clan females, no hyena would dare to hurt Nasanta. Four kilometers to the southwest, Twambo is not faring quite as well. He's also growing up fast, with the first spots showing through his black coat. But unlike most of the other cubs, Twambo is a loner. As the cubs get older, they become more aware of each other's ranks. The higher ranking cubs have built bonds with each other, forming relationships they will carry into adulthood. But Twambo has few allies in the clan. When the other cubs do take an interest in him, it's usually to beat him up. The older the cubs get, the more they pick on little Twambo. 
And unlike Nasanta, Twambo will get no help from his mother. He must fight his battles alone. In the meantime, Twambo's mother has other things in mind. It's time to leave the cubs to hunt. There are many mouths to feed. The clan needs a big kill. Tonight, the hyenas will hunt as a pack. The search for prey takes Twambo's clan dangerously close to rival territory. They are right on the border of Nasanta's clan's hunting ground. Clans are viciously territorial. If they're discovered, a conflict could break out, but it's a risk they are willing to take. They isolate a small herd of wildebeest, seeking out the most vulnerable targets. The clan charges the herd. A cow bolts in panic. A calf is separated from the herd. Both mother and calf fall to the deadly pack. But despite their success, the clan's proximity to rival territory makes them nervous. A violent clash with Nasanta's clan could end in serious injuries. They eat feverishly, dismembering the carcasses in minutes. The powerful jaws crush down with almost half a ton of force, tearing through bone and flesh with ease. Despite the feeding frenzy, the hyenas are anxious to avoid being discovered by their rivals. They try to drag the kills back into their own territory before they are spotted. The move comes too late. A territorial patrol from Nasanta's clan has come to investigate. <laughs> the scouts approach with caution as the intruding clan braces for a fight. Tensions are high on both fronts. A few scouts try to approach the kill, but the intruders chase them off. The scouts are grossly outnumbered. They won't win this fight alone, so they retreat. But this battle isn't over yet. The scouts will return with reinforcements. As dawn breaks, Twambo's clan continues its feast. Lulled into false security, they hold their position, still precariously close to enemy territory. Mm. 
By mid-morning, the dregs of the kill are left to the lowest-ranking hyenas of Twambo's clan, who saw little of the lavish feast during the night. But they have overstayed their welcome. The scouts from the Santa's clan have returned with reinforcements. This territorial infringement will not be taken lightly. The intruders recognize the danger too late. The full force of Nasanta's clan is upon them. Twambo's father, the intruding clan's alpha male, is in trouble. A large female from the Santa's clan is close on his tail. Females show him no mercy. They target his spine and ears. This is a fight for his life. As dusk falls, the battered members of Twambo's clan return to the den. Many are wounded, but only one is missing. Twambo's father. Weeks pass before he finally appears limping and disfigured, but alive. His wounds have healed, but they will mark him for life. His ear has been ripped from his head. But the alpha male's injuries are not the worst of the fight. At Nasanta's den to the north, a male hyena's wounds reflect the true horror of the conflict. His nose and lips have been ripped from his face, healing into a permanent snarl. Next to humans, hyenas are probably one of the most fatally aggressive animals on Earth. One day, Twambo will have to breach this deadly territorial rivalry when he leaves to find a mate in a new clan. In the weeks following the clan war, the rains continue to fall in a ceaseless torrent.
rising waters swallow vast tracts of land. There is little dry ground, a blessing for the birds, but a curse for the herds that must wade through shoulder-high water. The flooding encroaches fast on Twambo's den. The adult hyenas seem to enjoy the quagmire, using it as a pantry in which to store scraps for future meals. But the cubs cannot swim as well as their parents. If the waters reach the den, they could drown. For now, the den is still dry, and Twambo and his clanmates are safe. Twambo is starting to look more like the adult hyenas. His once black coat is now a spotty mane of brown fur, and he has more than doubled in size. But his low rank remains a problem. Even the smallest cubs still actively pick on him. Fortunately, he's also becoming more independent and can escape his belligerent clanmates as he explores ever further from the den. But as adulthood draws near, the toughest part of his life approaches. Soon, instinct will compel him to leave in search of a mate from another clan. If he's not killed for intruding on rival territory, he'll have to struggle for acceptance into a new clan. What little rank he has will be stripped away, and like the adult males of his own clan, he'll become submissive to the clan females. Unprovoked attacks and exclusion from kills will become commonplace. It's a hard life, but life without a clan is harder. Alone, he may struggle for food. His ability to draw nutrition from even the oldest bones may become a matter of survival. At the clan to the north, Nasanta and her sister will not suffer this fate. As high-ranking females, they will never want for food. In fact, unlike Twambo, they will often be the first to feed at kills. Much of the land around Nasanta's den is dry, and the matriarch guides the cubs through their future hunting grounds. Soon, they will even be allowed to join their mother on a hunt. At nightfall, the rains begin anew. Catfish squirm through the flooded Lua Plain as the waters rise ever higher. If the flood reaches Twambo's den, it could change everything for his clan. The downpour continues into the morning. A female from Twambo's clan returns to the den, but her clanmates are gone. The burrows lie empty. The waters have crept within meters of the den. They are dangerously high. The cubs lack the size and strength to swim to safety and could easily drown in the deep waters.
Cut off from dry land, the den could become a death trap. The matriarch must have led the cubs out in the night before the waters reached the den. But this female has been left behind. She will have to search for the clan on higher ground, or try to survive without them. Was Twambo with the other cubs when they left? Or has he too been abandoned in the flood, left to search the territory for remnants of his clan? Years pass, and the fates of Twambo and his clan remain uncertain. Dry seasons come and go, and each year the plains flood anew. Nasanta continues to flourish as she grows into a high-ranking adult. But today, something unexpected happens. A stranger appears. A hyena foreign to Nasanta's clan. It's Twambo. He survived the floods and has grown to adulthood. He's on his own now, searching for a mate and a new clan. He's been drawn here by the scent of a female in season. That female is Nasanta, and Twambo gets her attention. He's an intruder in her territory, but she doesn't attack him. She'd rather claim him as a mate. New genes in the clan are a valuable asset, and nomadic males are often favored as mates over resident males. With Nasanta's approval, Twambo's intrusion is allowed by the clan, for now. But there is one hyena that disapproves of the match. He is a high-ranking male from Nasanta's clan. And his hopes for mating with Nasanta have been dashed for now by Twambo's unexpected appearance. The pair retreat to avoid a conflict. But the scorned male follows them intent on challenging Twambo for mating rights. A long distance chase begins. In the blistering midday heat, Twambo and Nasanta try to outrun their pursuer. but the male hyena won't give up. After a marathon chase, Twambo and Nasanta mate at last. But in seconds, the competing male catches up. He's still desperate to mate, but he will have to get past Twambo first. Mating is no simple task for spotted hyenas. Because of Nasanta's male-like genitalia, it takes much maneuvering for Twambo to cover her successfully. Without her consent, no male can force her to mate. But that doesn't stop the scorned male from trying. He attempts to mount Nasanta from behind Twambo. At last, the male accepts defeat, leaving Twambo and Nasanta to complete their courtship in peace. But when the mating ends, so too does the clan's tolerance for Twambo. He must still gain acceptance into Nasanta's clan. The next day, Twambo approaches Nasanta's den to attempt to gain acceptance.
The dominant females immediately investigate the stranger. Twambo flattens his ears and bows his head to show his submission. But it's not enough for them. He's still a member of a rival clan, and they will attack him if he does not show complete submission. In order to gain acceptance into the clan, Twambo must also win the favor of the matriarch, Nasanta's mother. She is nursing a new litter of cubs, and she'll protect them at all costs, especially from strangers like Twambo. Twambo keeps his head low, showing absolute deference. The tactic works. The matriarch relents. Finally, she allows him to greet her by sniffing beneath her hind leg. He does the same to her cubs, who will rank above him in this clan. At last, he is allowed to lie down only meters from the matriarch. It seems that Twambo has been accepted into Nasanta's clan. Now, it is Nasanta that must face her toughest challenge yet. Over the next four months, her pregnancy comes to term. At last, the moment arrives. She sits at the entrance to a solitary burrow, where only days before, she survived an excruciating birth. Because of her unusual male-like genitalia, a female spotted hyena's first birth is always extraordinarily painful. Stillbirths are common, but Nasanta's one tiny female cub survived. Like her parents, Twambo and Nasanta, this cub will have to endure life on the lower plane. She'll be spared from a life of bullying like Twambo's because she'll inherit Nasanta's high rank. But she'll still have to survive desperate drought, torrential flooding, natural disasters, and vicious rivalries with other clans. She'll have to learn what it takes to become a bone crusher queen.